You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadulu. Welcome back, everyone, to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadulu. It is Monday, April 11th, 2022, and today we are continuing. Continuing on with more of my draft preview series, where we will be discussing the Los Angeles Chargers and some of the players I would like to see them target in this year's draft. So my Chargers fans, make sure you comment down below. Let me know who you would like to see the Chargers go after in this year's draft, especially if you have a specific person in mind for round number one, maybe even rounds number two or three, some of those earlier day two guys. But... Let's get into it, shall we? So the Chargers, probably one of um, the more exciting teams, I think, going into this season. And, I mean, you guys have an excellent quarterback, an excellent couple of good wide receivers. Offensive line is slowly getting better and better, it feels, year over year. And I think there's a good opportunity to even double down on that in this year's draft class. And then the defense, what is there to really say about some of the additions made on that unit there? Khalil Mack was traded for. J.C. Jackson was signed. I mean, there is a lot to be excited about over in L.A., and I'm not talking about the Rams side of things. Now, there are a couple of areas of improvement that I have identified for the team that I would like to see them go after, and we'll start with day three. We'll then jump into day two, and then last but certainly not least, we'll talk the first round selection at number 17 that I've picked out for them. But for day number three, and this is probably the least pressing of the matters, but based off of the production we've gotten from the linebacker room and a first round pick from 2020 not playing quite up to the level that I feel the Chargers were hoping for when he was selected and now an entire regime change having happened since he was drafted, I think linebacker would be a in more intriguing spot to go after later in the draft because again it's probably the least pressing need of the three different players I've picked out for this and why I have him selected as day three would be linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez out of Oklahoma State now this guy very athletic 45240 he's got a 39 and a half inch vertical the dude has some good legs underneath him couple that with the fact that he is praised for his ability in the pursuit going after the ta- the football and getting to the tackle he's already he's already a pretty solid guy in coverage as well um, one thing that I noticed in a lot of the draft profiles that I was reading about him and it kept coming up over and over was that he's really good at meeting the receiver at the point of catch when it comes to playing inside the field there. So somebody who one can kind of work his zone fairly well and also break up the passes when necessary. This is someone who has a lot of really good physical traits. He's really solid at, at, to begin with in coverage and hopefully will improve as, as he works his way through the league. And with the way the NFL has kind of evolved at the linebacker position, you want somebody who can handle the coverage game. I feel like linebackers more and more are becoming more and more athletic and are able to, you know, get after it and, you know, hang with some of those wide receivers flying through the slot and those tight ends that are becoming like freak of nature athletes at this point. Now, one of the big cons to his game, and it's not really much he can do about, he's only 5'11", 225 pounds, so he's undersized, and that seemed to get brought up in every single negative section of his draft profiles when I was reading through them all. Uh, He also tends to go after the big hit a little bit too often. He has a slightly lower missed tackle rate than you'd want to see for somebody, uh, but it seems like rather than just making like a safe tackle, he he typically tries to blow people up and, and it leads to poor tackling angles and not necessarily pulling the guy down and, and, and just some ugly broken tackles that are not necessary are just not necessary and that he should be making on top of that. He apparently has been noted for having some inconsistent hustle on some plays more so than others, which whatever that may be stamina wise, or maybe just, I don't know, not, not in the right headspace for that moment of time. I don't know. I don't want to speak on that because I don't necessarily know, but it was something that I saw get brought up a handful of times when I was reading about him. So overall, I think a really solid player coming from Oklahoma State. He's played some really good teams. He's you know been a part of some important game planning, so to speak, going up against some of the better offenses in the college ranks. So I think this would be a solid day three guy, an excellent depth selection, and a guy that doesn't necessarily need to be ready day one, but someone you can kind of mold into and make a solid linebacker in the league down the road. Now, for my day two selection, we're going to flip over to the offensive side of the football. 
and I'm going to talk offensive line. Now, left side of that offensive line from center to the left, excellent group. The right side, a little bit more on the unknown, and hence why I'm going in day two, because I think that you can still get some really solid value in the second round or second and third rounds of the draft, excuse me. Offensive guard Cole Strange out of Chattanooga. Yes, he played left side. He has some experience at left tackle and also left guard. He's also very smart, and from what I've read about him, a lot of people feel he could even handle playing center if need be, so he brings versatility. Couple that with the fact that this dude has some explosive legs, and that's shown by the 120-inch broad jump that he had at the combine. This is someone that, you know... If you're looking for offensive linemen and not necessarily like a day one guy, you're typically looking for someone who can fill needs in multiple places and kind of develop into a role in the system. Everyone has him labeled as a guy that can work literally from left side to right side on the offensive line, and you're probably going to need him more on the right side than anything else. He can probably slot into that right guard position and be fairly effective there if need be day one. I've seen some people say that he could potentially be a day one starter depending on where he goes and the scheme fit and everything and the coaching he receives. And couple that with his strengths lie in the run game. You want to open things up for this offense and Justin Herbert, get yourself a guy who can clear out some pathways for Austin Eckler, open things up and really help that ground game get going. I understand you have Justin Herbert and his fantastic arm, probably one of the best throwers in the league, arguably at this early stage in his career. There's only maybe a few guys you would take before him. I'm a very big fan of Justin Herbert, and I think the guy has all the talent in the world and then some. He had, in my opinion, the best throw last year, that 65-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Guyton. I don't, you know, everyone's seen it. I feel like the NFL posts it again, you know, every couple of weeks we see it pop up in the timeline again on Instagram and stuff. But Ultimately, you want to open you want to open things up for him to allow him to be even more effective and bringing a guy like Cole Strange who's really effective in the run game can do just that. Now there's not to say of course, no cons to his game. Competition wasn't necessarily the best that he went against considering the schools he played having played at Chattanooga himself. However, in his game against Kentucky, it was actually one of his best games. And that was probably the best team on the schedule that they played. So the fact that he showed up and played well against one of the tougher teams on the schedule and, and are honestly probably the toughest team on the schedule, that bodes well for him and for his game tape and for the way people look at him. You want to see, especially in limited opportunities against good schools, you want to show up and play really well. And that's definitely going to speak volumes to the scouts and everyone that's watching him. Couple that with his pass technique, not necessarily the best. So that is something he's going to have to work on. But technique type things are typically, as long as you can beat the bad technique out of them, typically something easier to work with as opposed to somebody who just does not have it physically. You can teach technique. You can't really teach like raw strength and animal power and size and things like that. So technique stuff can always be worked on so long as the player is coachable. And there is a, a slight knock on just how lean he is and how his strength is an issue as well. But it's not something super pressing, but <clears throat> excuse me, something I did see get brought up a couple of times when I was reading through some of the scouting reports on him. But I think Cole Strange overall, you're bringing him in, you know, day two, day three, somewhere around there, depending on where he falls. He doesn't necessarily have to start day one, but he definitely has the potential, especially if you're going to slot him into like that right guard section on the offensive line. Now, for day one, pick number 17, the grand finale, the fun one, who would the Chargers target at number 17 in this year's draft? Well, I love what they've been doing on the defensive line so far this offseason. Sebastian Joseph Day and Khalil Mack are phenomenal additions to help shore up a run defense that was abysmal last season. Couple that. With drafting, if he's available, and from the mock drafts I've seen, there is definitely potential for it to be because he seems to be going somewhere around the area where the Chargers are picking. Some I've seen him like a position or two higher get taken or even a few positions below where the Chargers are at. Defensive tackle, Devontae Wyatt out of Georgia. This guy is considered the all-around best defensive lineman just in terms of tools on the inside. You want to shore up that run D, plug this guy in, 11.5% run stop rate last year. Sebastian Joseph Day, solid run defender, 
We obviously know what Bosa can do. We obviously know what Matt can do. You put Devontae Wyatt in there, and suddenly you are looking at four guys at the front when they're playing nickel. You could literally run a four-man front with those four guys and be fine. You should be able to to you know shut down the run fairly easily with a group like this. I mean, the idea of that grouping... I'm not even a Chargers fan, and that gets me excited. Now he can couple, and 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 that's not even like, and that's just that's just with the run. He can get after the pass. He had four sacks last season, thirteen point one percent pass rush win rate, and this is a guy who you can move around as necessary as well. While he was primarily a B gap guy, he played in the A gap. He played over the tackle as well. He's he's played in a handful of different spots and found success all over the front end of that Georgia line. If he's available, I understand that, you know, you can never have too many wide receivers and, you you know, you can never have too many good offensive skill players and whatnot. And maybe this isn't the sexiest pick for the Chargers here. But while you, we know that the Chargers can hang offensively, I don't think that that's really a question. Austin Eckler's phenomenal. Keenan Allen is arguably the, one of the best route runners in the league and has some of the best hands in the league as well. I know he's aging, but he's still very productive at this point. You got Mike Williams back. Tight end is definitely a position of need that I think that they'll have to address at some point in the draft as well. Um, But we'll have to see what happens there. We obviously have Everett. We'll see what happens. But Devontae Wyatt, man, you help slow down the run game of some of these high-powered AFC offenses you're going up against. Coupled with the fact that you have two dominant edge rushers now coming off of the sides. I, th- I feel like Devontae Wyatt's like that final piece you need on that D-line. And I would love to see him land in LA as a charger, fortify that front four right there, or not front four, but that four-man defensive front when they're playing nickel. And you can you can rush four and drop back the rest. I mean, that would be such a good unit. And it's just, it's, it's something that I'm really, really, really hoping to see. And if it's not Devonte Wyatt, I hope it ends up being someone else, but I would, it just, it seems like there is a strong potential that this could be an availability when they're picking at number 17. And my goodness, I understand the prospect of getting a wide receiver is probably really enticing. You have some pretty solid and underrated lesser known skill guys over there in LA. Get a D lineman to finish up that group there up front and let that 30, they weren't 30. I think they finished 30th. I was going to say 32nd, but I think they finished 30th. Let that near dead last run game be something you leave in the 2021 season and not think twice about in the 2022 season. That is my draft preview for the LA Chargers. Again, Chargers fans, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for watching. Have a good one.